Today we are going through and just reading summaries of a bunch of papers related to cosine similarity and cosine normalization. Um, just for reference, this is related to the current architecture I'm working on. Um, if you want to look at this architecture, basically this is a regular GPT in my diagram. Notice I have taken the layers, uh, the actual bulk of the thing, and just skipped over it entirely. I am only going to be editing this ending portion. Um, this is a minimally different version where I just check to make sure that cosine norm, cosine similarity, and my weird activation function don't absolutely break everything and it still a little bit works. Um, and then I'll be moving on to the actual model, which this is the training version of it. Um, it looks more complicated than the regular GPT, but really remember that I concatenated the layers. I, I skipped over entirely all that stuff because I didn't edit any of it. So my approach is only editing the ending of a model, the um, classifier at the end, um, how it's used to train and perform inference, um, and that the actual bulk of the model stays the same. So th this diagram isn't as crazy as it seems, I promise. Um, but anyways, uh, damn it, I'm gonna get rid of that. Anyways, uh, I suppose let's get to it. There's 37 papers here. If you wanna read them, you're weird, um, but you can read them. My sub stack also has prereq knowledge and probably incorrect citations, but uh, whatever. Um, let's get to it. Towards understanding generalization and gradient-based meta-learning. Uh, investigate, da, 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 analyze properties of the objective landscape and their relation to generalization. They experimentally demonstrate that as meta-training progresses, adapted meta-test solutions become flatter, lower in loss, and further away from the meta-trained solution. This is in contrast with behavior of a fine-tuning baseline. I don't think this is related. It should have... So in theory, there's a, it says cosine norm or similarity somewhere in here, but I'm wondering if my search algorithm is just messed up. Um, I don't think it does say it. Yeah, there's a lot of papers in here I think that are just aren't related at all that like the search algorithm brought up when it shouldn't have. I think I was searching with multiple keywords in a thing, but then it splits those apart, and so I just have, like, similarity in there now. God damn it. Oh, well, we're gonna just roll with it. The linear representation hypothesis and the geometry of large language models. Uh, da, 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 da. The hypothesis suggests that the high-level concepts are represented linearly in the model's representation space. Claim to clarify what this means and how it relates to interpretation and control in language models. Introduces three interpretations. Da, da, da. Um, this doesn't seem related, but it sounds interesting. I wonder if I've already downloaded it, honestly. I'm kind of tempted to think that I have, but whatever. The document vectors using cosine similarity revisited. Uh, we thought the performance of an ensemble model called DV Ngrams Cosine, which combines two different representations of documents on the IMD Movie Reviews data sets. They discovered a bug in the evaluation procedure of the ensemble, which led to an incorrect estimation of the test accuracy. After fixing the bug, they found that the correct test accuracy of the ensemble is 93.6%, not 97%. Uh, compared to the performance with transform based Roberta model on different subsets of training sets, surprisingly they found that the outperforms Roberta when... Um, I don't care about their bug fix, but I do want to see what this cosine model they have going on is. So I am going to download this. Structural aware sentence similarity with recursive optimal transport. A uh, new framework called recursive optimal transport for measuring sentence similarity incorporates structural information such as word such as word order into the classical optimal transport approach. Authors also establish a connection between OT and the cosine similarity of weighted average word vectors, which leads to new semantic insights. Uh, breaks down sentences into substructures based on a given tree structure, then computes optimal transport at each level, passing the alignment information from high level to lower level. This allows the model to capture the structural information and produce structural aware alignments. Framework is scalable and can handle long sentences. Interesting. This sounds maybe related. Um, not that they like beat me to anything, but it sounds like it's worth a in my related work section citation or whatever it is. Send to Obsidian. Stable anisotropic regularization. 
a relationship between isotropy uh, and large language models and their performance in downstream tasks, proposed a novel regulation method called I-STAR um, to adjust the level of isotropy in LLM presentations during training. They introduce ISO score, a measure of isotropy that is differentiable and sta stable in many batch computations. Find that the decreasing isotropy in LLMs tends to improve performance in various fine-tuning tasks and models, contrary to previous claims in the literature. Highlights limitations of previous methods for measuring isotropy in LLM, such as average random cosine similarity and the partition isotropy score. Propose ISO score as a more accurate measure of isotropy, which takes into account the uniformity of principal components. Um, I want to know what this average random cosine similarity measure is a little bit, and I just want to see someone propose a, a new normalization technique. Um, so I'm going to add it. Second order word embeddings from nearest neighbor topological features. Core assertion is that second order word embeddings derived from nearest neighbor topology can capture most of the performance benefits of using first order embeddings in downstream natural language processing tasks. Propose a two step process inducing a K nearest neighbor graph from pre trained embeddings and then using unsupervised graph embeddings methods to learn second order embeddings. I don't think this matters to me. <clears throat> Scalable data point valuation and decentralized learning. Focus on the problem of valuing data points and decentralized learning, specifically in federated learning and swarm learning scenarios. Propose a method called DDVAL for hierarchical data valuation, which can value individual data points as well as groups of data points. Goal is to incentivize institutions, individuals to contribute their data to decentralized machine learning tasks. Approach is based on sharing deep features and approximating shapely values through a K nearest neighbor approximation method. Deep features are extracted from the data points, use a trained neural network, and the KNN method is used to estimate. I don't care. Representation learning with weighted inner product for universal approximation of general similarities. New similarity model called weighted inner product similarity for representation learning and graph embedding. Um, I don't think I care because it's graphs. Uh, da, 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 da. I don't care. Problems of cosine as a measure of embedding similarity for high frequency words. Interesting. Uh, investigate the impact of word frequency on the cosine similarity of contextual embeddings, particularly using BERT embeddings. Find that the cosine similarity underestimates the similarity of high frequency words compared to human judgments. This effect persists even after controlling for factors such as poly, semi, part of speech, and lemma. Propose that this underestimation is due to differences in representational geometry of high and low frequency words. Interesting. Two studies support their findings. In the first study, they use the word in context data set, which contains pairs of words in context with human similarity judgments. Find a significant negative association between cosine similarity and word frequency, both for examples with the same meaning and different meaning. Underestimation of similarity is more pronounced for high frequency words. The second study, they use Stanford contextualized word similarity data set, which also contains human similarity judgments. Find that the frequency is a significant feature in predicting cosine similarity, even after accounting for human judgments. However, adding frequency as a feature does not significantly improve the prediction of human ratings compared to cosine similarity alone. Um, problems with cosine makes me want to download it. I'm just kind of confused as to what's actually happening here. I don't think it'll actually be relevant at all, but weird. I'm too exhausted for this. Poem, polarization of embeddings for domain invariant representations. Core assertion is that the existing methods for domain generalization and deep visual models focus on minimizing the discrepancy between domains to obtain domain invariant representations. However, the proposed method called POEM takes a different approach by learning both domain invariant and domain specific representations and polarizing them. Goal is to enhance the domain robustness of representations and improve generalization capability of novel domains. I don't think this matters to me. Mechanics involve co-training, category classifying, and domain classifying embeddings while representing them to be orthogonal. Minimizing the cosine similarity between features, which is referred to as the polarization of embeddings. Clear separation of embeddings suppress the domain specific features and domain variant embeddings leading to improved domain generalization. Okay, I think I should, yeah.
Non-parametric spherical topic modeling for with word embeddings. Uh, okay, it says spherical modeling. Probably you want this. Largest word embeddings captures many languages. Language uses the von Mises Fisher distribution to model the density of words over a unit sphere, which is well suited for directional data. Model is based on the hierarchical direct. I hate pronouncing that guy's name. It's so annoying. Dirichlet process. I don't even remember anymore. And uses stochastic variational inference for efficient inference. Yeah, the spherical thing. I I don't want to touch that guy's stuff, but whatever. Um, what's it called? Certain mathematicians, they're not well known enough that I actually remember how to pronounce their name, and most of their shit is annoying as hell. If they're that at that stage where like they they didn't make any simple shit I can understand easily, unfortunately. So we'll see how that one goes. Memorization through the lens of curvature of loss function around samples. New metric for measuring memorization in deep neural networks based on the curvature of the loss function around each training sample. Show that samples with high curvature are more likely to be memorized by the network. Validate their metric by comparing it to an independent baseline measure of memorization and conducting by conducting a synthetic label corruption experiment. Qualitatively analyze the high curvature samples and find that they correspond to long-tailed, mislabeled, or conflicting samples. Provide visual examples from different image data sets, such as MNIST. Uh, this is cool. This sounds cool. It's not related, I don't think. Um, how can we use them to achieve high cosine similarity in the baseline scores, indicating the validity of their metric? However, they also find their method captures a failure. This is not related, I don't think, but it is cool sounding. I do want to read it um, at some point. Lips former introducing Lipschitz continuity division transformers. How are you forcing that? I'm curious. Da, 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 aims to address the training instability issue in transformer-based models. They argue that Lipschitz continuity is a more essential property for training stability than previous practical tricks such as learning rate, warm-up, layer normalization, attention formation, and weight initialization. Well, yeah, but how do you make it Lipschitz? Uh, analyze the key components of the transformer architecture, including the yeah, yeah, potential instability problems in each mo module, and propose Lipschitz continuous counterparts for them. Okay. For example, they introduced center norm as a replacement for layer norm scaled cosine similarity attention instead of dot product attention and weighted residual shortcut. They, pro they prove that these introduced models are Lipschitz continuous and derive upper bounds on their Lipschitz constants. Very cool. Um, when was this? April? Hmm. Main contribution. Uh, I don't... Maybe that... Use, I don't think this use of cosine similarity attention is going to be relevant to me at all. Um, although maybe it's worth incorporating. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but I do think it's a cool um, that they can do that, that they can force Lipschitz continuity um, on the actual thing. Because that's such a huge assumption that we just can't, don't know so often. Interpretable adversarial training for text. New method called sparse project, projected gradient descent for crafting interpretable adversarial examples in the text domain. I don't think I care about adversarial training at all. Excuse me. Yeah, I don't think I care. I don't think I care. Hyperdimensional feature fusion for outer distribution detection. Propose a novel method. Detecting out of distribution samples in deep neural networks, only existing approaches that rely on a single layer of this network. HDFF uses information in multiple layers using similarity reserving projection matrices and bundling operations. Core idea is to project the feature maps from different layers. I don't care. FedCOS, a scene adaptive federated optimization enhancement for performance improvement. New enhancement federated learning called FedCOS, which aims to improve the performance federated learning in the presence of data heterog heterogeneity. Others identified two main problems caused by data heterogeneity, communication inefficiency, and poor performance. To address these problems, FedCoS introduces a cosine similarity penalty that reduces the directional inconsistency of local models. Penalty encourages local models to move in the same direction, leading to more efficient communication and better model performance. Interesting. Experiments to evaluate performance. Uh, it consistently outperforms the other methods and can even enhance their performance in certain scenarios. Improves communication efficiency by reducing the number of communication rounds required by to achieve a model with comparable performance. Um, I don't think I actually care about this. Feature weaken. 
Vicinal Data Augmentation for Classification. Vic Vicinal? Core assertion is that novel training method called Feature Awaken can improve generalization performance of deep learning models. It's a data augmentation method that constructs a visceral data distribution by weakening the features of the original samples, changes the spatial distribution of samples, adjusts sample boundaries, and reduces the gradient optimization value of backpropagation. Mechanics involve embedding level feature weaken and hidden level feature weaken. Um, weakens the features of the original samples by producing the vectors in the embedding level. I don't know what this means. I don't care. Exploring sentence vector spaces through automatic summarization. Uh, da, da, da. Investigate different combinations of vectors functions and selector functions to understand how they affect each other and the quality of the summaries generated. Use various metrics including rogue scores to evaluate the performance of these combinations. Several key findings. Cosine similarity between sentence vectors and document vectors is strongly correlated with sentence importance. This suggests that Vector semantics can be used to identify important sentences for summarization. Uh, it can also help identify and correct graph gaps between the co-sentence that is chosen for the summary in the original document. I don't think I care. Exploiting the relationship between Kendall's rank correlation and cosine similarity for attribution protection. Problem of protecting model attributions in deep neural networks from adversarial attacks. Focus on non-differential Kendall's rank correlation, which is commonly used to measure the differences between natural and perturbed attributions. Uh, first show that the expected Kendall's rank correlation is positively correlated with cosine similarity, which measures the angle between two vectors. Finally, suggest that maximized cosine similarity can enhance attribution robustness. Whatever. Evidence for hypodescent in visual semantic AI. Investigate whether the multimodal AI model clip exhibits a bias known as hypodescent, which refers to the tendency to categorize multiracial individuals as belonging to the minority or disadvantaged racial group. They conduct a face morphing experiment similar to previous. I don't think I care. Evaluation of similarity based explanations. Investigate a different relevance metrics for similarity based explanations to provide similar instances as evidence to support model predictions. Propose three tests to evaluate the relevance, relevance metrics in terms of their appropriateness for similarity based explanation. First test is the model randomization test, which assesses whether the relevance metric is independent of the model. Second test is the identical class test, which evaluates whether the most similar instance belongs to the same class as the test instance. Third, I don't know, I don't think this matters. Directed graph representation through vector cross product, probably doesn't matter. Novel approach called graph representation encoding edge detection direction for embedding nodes in directed graphs. Goal is to learn node embeddings that not only capture the proximity between nodes, but also preserve the direction of edges. Others leverage the non commutative property of the vector cross product to encode the direction of the edges into the embeddings. Consists of a Siamese neural network architecture where the source and target nodes are passed through separate branches. I don't care. Denoising diffusion probabilistic models for hardware impaired communication systems towards wireless generative AI, probably don't care. Use of denoising diffusion probabilistic models for wireless communication systems with hardware impaired transceivers. Type of generative model that can learn the systematic decay of information due to noise and distortions, and distortions allowing for the reconstruction of the original data. Propose a DDPM based receiver for wireless communication that can handle realistic non idealities such as hardware impairments, channel distortions, quantization errors, don't care. Denoise and cosine similarity, a theory driven approach for efficient representation learning. Problem of learning robust representations in the presence of noise and raw data. Propose a denoise and cosine similarity loss, which is a modified cosine similarity loss that incorporates a denoising property. DCS loss, I want to know what cosine similarity loss is. Uh, DCS loss is designed to learn representations from noisy data without requiring access to clean data. Others provide theoretical justification for the DCS loss and propose estimators for the weight parameter of the loss function. Compare performance with baseline in vision and speech domains. Demonstrate that it outperforms baselines in various denoising and resilient learning tasks. Okay. Sounds low key not relevant, but I think it might be, and it is based off the title.
deep distributional sequence embeddings based on a Wasserstein loss, proposed a deep metric learning approach cover sequence data with a focus on biometric problems, concept of distributional embeddings where the embeddings of a sequence is given by the distribution of learned deep features across the sequence. This captures disk information about the distribution of patterns within the sequence and the embedding. To measure distances between distributional embeddings, propose using Wasserstein distances which take into account metric on the space in which the random variable is defined. Advantageous because it considered distributions in which similar magnitudes of filter activations. I, I zoned out, not going to lie, but I think it's probably not related. DAG ACFL, asynchronous clustered federated learning based on DAG DLT, novel framework called uh, uh, framework is designed to address the challenges of non-IID data distribution and federated learning by incorporating clustering techniques and asynchronous training. Don't care. Cosine similarity based adversarial processes. Novel adversarial process called cosine adversarial network for training robust discriminative models. Uh, aims to eliminate the subsidiary information such as channel or domain information from the input data to improve the performance of the primary task. Unlike conventional adversarial processes that maximize the categorical cross entropy of the subsidiary model, proposed CAN framework maximizes the cosine similarity between the codes, the encoder, and the weight parameters of the subsidiary model. Process effectively degrades the performance of the subsidiary model and makes the output independent of the input. Empirical evidence support the claim that conventional adversarial processes based on CCE does not guarantee the removal of subsidiary information. I kind of zoned out, but it has cosine the title. I'm just going to add it. I'm getting too tired for this. Cosine normalization using cosine similarity instead of dot products in neural networks. I don't even have to read, read the summary. I'm going to add that. That's obviously related to my thing. That's the first one to read, I bet. Correlation coefficients and semantic textual similarity. Use of correlation coefficients and similarity measures for word embeddings. They argue that cosine similarity, which is commonly used, is essentially equivalent to the Pearson correlation coefficient. Show that for most word embeddings, the means of the word vectors are close to zero, which justifies the use of cosine similarity. However, they also demonstrate that Pearson correlation is sensitive to departures from normality, and when the word embeddings do not follow a normal distribution, cosine similarity may not be appropriate. Uh, proposed using rank-based correlation coefficients such as Spearman's row. This I don't think matters. Clustering is efficient for approximate maximum inner product search. Simple and efficient approach for solving maximum inner product search problem, which is important for in recommendation systems and classification tasks with a large number of classes. Compare their approach to existing tree-based and ha hashing-based methods and show that their method achieves higher speedouts for the same or truer product precision. Proposed approach involves reducing the MIPS problem to a maximum cosine similarity search problem and then using a variant of the k-means clustering algorithm to find the candidate set of vectors the high cosine similarity to the query vector. Also propose a hierarchical version of the k-means algorithm to further improve performance. Two collaborative filter data sets. Um, I don't. It, it said it said enough terms in there. I'm, I'm thinking maybe yes. Oh, I am not excited for all these. Oh my god, it took me so long to do the grokking papers, and then I just switched topic entirely. I'm not excited to read these cosine papers. Closed form word embedding alignment. A familiar family of techniques to align word embeddings derived from different source data sets or or created using different mechanisms. Goal is to find an optimal transformation that minimizes the root mean squared errors or maximizes the average cosine similarity between two embeddings of the same vocabulary into the same dimensional space. Extend concept of absolute orientation, which is commonly used in computer vision and shape analysis to align word embeddings, provide a closed form solution to the optimal rotation so that the choice of translation does not affect the optimal rotation. Don't think this matters to me. Can we trust the similarity measurement in federated learning? Investigate the security of similarity metrics in federated learning. Authors uncover the vulnerabilities of so many metrics, such as L2 norm, including distance and cosine similarity, and evaluating the reliability of local models in FL. Find that high dimensional local models, including both benign and poison models, can have the same similarity while having significantly different parameter values. This means that similarity metrics are not reliable in distinguishing between benign and malicious models. Whatever. 
at man, understanding the transformer predictions through memory efficient attention manipulation. Introduces a novel method called at man, explaining predictions of large scale transformer models, such as those in network processing, computer vision. Address the challenge of resource intensive explainability methods that require large amounts of memory, making them practical for deployment in production systems. At man overcomes limitation by leveraging attention manipulation to produce relevant relevance maps for the input with respect to the out prediction without need for back propagation. Doesn't matter to me. An empirical study of hyperparameters and their interdependence for RL generalization. Understanding the effects of different hyperparameters on generalization and RL. Conduct experiments using both synthetic and real-world RL environments to investigate their relationship between hyperparameters and generalization performance. First set of experiments uses an RNN MDP environment to simulate nonlinear dynamics. Result shows that adding stochasticity to the actions improves the alignment between the training gradient and the true gradient, leading to better generalization. Additionally, the experiments demonstrate that the discount factor gamma has different effects on generalization depending on the presence of stochasticity in the environment. Second set of experiments uses coin ruin envi run environment. I don't know. Nothing, nothing matters to me. Almost done. A new sentence ordering method using BERT pre-trained model. Propose a method for sentence ordering, which is the task of sequencing a set of disordered sentences to reconstruct the original paragraph or story. Aim to capture the sequence of events in a text by measuring coherence between sentences. Methods of three component sentence embeddings using a pre-trained model. Measuring sentence similarity using cosine similarity. And sentence ordering using brute force search. Evaluate their method on the ROC stories dataset, which consists of human-made five-sentence stories. Compare their results with several baselines, including tra traditional statistical methods and neural network-based methods. Da, 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 da. Results show proposed method um, outperforms baselines in both Kendall's Tau and PRM. Achieves the Kendall's Tau score. Blah, 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 blah. Highlight that their method does not require a training phase or a large corpus, making it more efficient than neural network-based methods with limited data is available. Also emphasize the interpretability of their method. No, not for me. New approach to intuitionistic fuzzy decision making based on projection technology and cosine similarity measure. Jesus Christ. Sounds like a long paper. Oh my god. I don't want to read this one. New similarity measure for intuitionistic fuzzy sets based on cosine similarity measure and projection technology. Don't care. Hell yeah. Uh Thy algorithm shalt not bear false witness and evaluation of multi-class debiasing, debiasing methods on word embeddings. Evaluate, da, 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 da. Specifically in the context of re religious bias, the author aims, authors aim to answer several recent questions, including the extent of religious bias and widely used word embeddings, comparison of state-of-the-art debias techniques, and the evaluation. All right, don't care. Uh, thanks for watching. If anyone actually did, I don't see why you would. This is a pretty niche topic at this point. And not very high quality commentary, but whatever. <sighs> Please like, subscribe, hit the bell, all the stuff that I should ask you as a YouTuber. Hop on the Discord, read the read this stuff um, over on my Substack, I guess. Uh, yeah, end of video.